planning a wedding was less stressful than this. How hard would it be to use a handbrake instead of a brake pedal? Here are my pedals. I've moved the brake as a symbolic gesture, and instead I've hooked up this. Now, Hoisingbell tells me that the handbrake is basically identical to my sprint brake pedal, so this should be pretty straightforward. So let's try this. Foot on the clutch, in gear. Okay, pulling away is the easy part. Take my left foot away from the pedals now. I'm up shifting with my braking hand, which is a very strange thing to be saying. And then pick a braking point. Try and find the braking limit. Downshift with my left hand, sail very wide of the apex. Struggle to trail brake properly as I let off of the handbrake. Clearly this is gonna take a bit of work. You might well ask, why am I doing this? Well, Hoisingveld reached out and asked if I'd like to review their new SIM handbrake. And I said, no, but perhaps we can come up with something a little bit more creative. So this is my setup. Hoisingveld sent me the SIM handbrake, which I've set up vertically right next to the wheel, so I can spend as little time as possible transitioning between the two, just like in a rally or a drift car. Also taking inspiration from drift cars, I've got this set up with some yaw so I can pull straight towards me rather than alongside, which in theory should give me more control. So let's try this again. While this does feel a little bit alien, mainly thanks to the lack of coordination, I must admit the longer throw of the handbrake compared to a brake pedal does seem to give a pretty good feel when you're trying to modulate the brakes. Difficult on cold tires as I am though. This very much is a test of coordination. It's a lot like trying to sort of rub your head with one hand and do keyhole surgery with the other at the same time. And since it appears that I'm starting to get the hang of things, why don't we see how this works out in a race? But first, I have to thank Remco from Hoisingveld, who masterminded this specific piece of torture. There is method to the madness, though. I think this setup demonstrates what's great about the handbrake without actually having to say any of it. I could tell you that it's well made, beautifully finished, extensively adjustable, and that it performs flawlessly, but really, you already know all of that. Hoisingveld have a reputation, and this product lives up to it. Enough said, I think. So rather than showing a couple of handbrake turns in dirt rally or a bit of highly suspect drifting, let's test out its capabilities in a nice, calm environment. I've chosen Mount Panorama because clearly I like an easy life. Launching off the handbrake feels amazing and it can be pretty quick, but it doesn't really change the fact that there's, well, never anywhere to go down into Hell Corner. And honestly, my mission here is to just avoid the AI shenanigans. This is not my first attempt at recording this. Hopefully going to get a bit of a slipstream from the Lamborghini, but realistically I'm going to run out of places to go, and if they're going to plan on going three wide, I plan on staying very, very far away from them. Let's just let the AI do its thing there and see what we can do once we get out of the next couple of corners, which are basically danger incarnate. There we go. Cutting has been, through my testing, one of the worst corners for lap one here because well, it's a horrible corner on cold tires anyway, and once you take one of your hands off the wheel because you're having to brake with it, it just makes life just that much worse. Lamborghini getting very frisky in front of us. Who knows where the AI is gonna brake for Skyline, and the answer is very early. Coming down the hill and into the dipper is one of the places where actually the handbrake seems to work better. If, well, better might be an exaggeration, but it seems to work very well. Just the ability to be able to modulate the brake in that very fine way as we desperately try and avoid the crash in front of us somehow do. As you're coming down the hill there, you need to vary the brake pressure quite a lot as the car loads and unloads. And being able to get the car stopped and turned through that particularly tight left-hander of the dippers, it's a bit of an exercise really. And the handbrake just does actually make modulating that just that little bit easier almost. Would I trade it out for a foot brake normally? Uh, probably not. But compared to all of the other stopping zones, that's the one where I'm sort of thinking that actually I quite like this. Breaking down for Murray's just slightly missed the apex, but not too badly. Managed to blend off the brakes and trail brake quite nicely there. And that's another thing that works really well with this handbrake setup. It's taken me most of a lap to catch back up with the AI after their little incident in front of me. But back in the fight again now. And actually in open ground when I'm not fighting with the Assetto Corsa AI, it's, uh, it's quite pleasant driving this way. Through the cutting again, getting a bit close to the wall for my liking, but managing to modulate the brakes, get the car turned around, and now we're right on the back of this GTR. Take it a little bit easier through Skyline than I normally would. Again, just modulating the brake pressure through there feels so good. 
The contrast is, of course, through Forest Elbow here, where finding the right amount of brake pressure seems almost impossible. I decided to notch the AI down to 98% for this. I found 100% didn't produce particularly good racing and I was struggling to keep up a little bit. I must admit, I've struggled on this lap to keep up with the AI, but actually I've been pretty close to my lap times. The braking isn't quite as nuanced, but I think, honestly, with a little bit more practice, I could get there. It does give me a healthy dose of respect for people that drive every day with hand controls. Obviously, they don't have a choice like I do, but we also saw Alex Zanardi racing at Daytona a couple of years ago with the M8, I think it was, with a massive handbrake like this, but he has to use a collar behind the wheel as his throttle as well. So he's got one more task than I have here. And I genuinely don't know how he could manage that. So if I were to draw a conclusion from this, and I probably shouldn't, it would be that, yes, you can use a handbrake instead of a foot brake. And honestly, it probably wouldn't take all that long to get at least reasonably comfortable doing so, but you should probably just use your feet.